terms in geometry. All geometry is based off that. I know it's been a long time, but we've used them over and over and over again. Points. Points. Ray. <laughs> Line. Lines. Lines. And planes. All geometry is based off of those three undefined terms. What makes them undefined terms? They don't have a what? Uh, definition. Definition. That's what it means to be undefined. Next one. Very key one here. You might want to put an asterisk beside that. If you can't do this stuff, then you're in major trouble come next week when you take this exam. Name geometrical shapes and use the symbols. So if I tell you to name an angle, tell me what to write. Any angle, just make up one. Angle A, B, C. Three letters. Are there other ways you could name angles? How many letters other than three? You could use one. We didn't do that very often. We try to stay away from it. You could use also a what? Number. A number. Name a triangle for me. Triangle ABC. Name a segment for me. Make up one. Segment A. A what? B. B. What did I forget? You've got to know the symbols and you've got to use the correct symbols. If you don't, on the test, especially on exams, because I'm tired of grading by this time in the year, so as I'm looking at it, it's easier just to, instead of trying to fix everything and do stuff like I did on past tests, it'll just be marked wrong. That's correct. So, uh, marked it. Somebody tell me what this is. Read that to me. Circle P. Circle P. So on, so on, so on. Know the basic terms in geometry. Collinear. What's collinear mean? Same line. Same line. Coplanar. Same plane. Same plane. So on, so on, so on. I put this et cetera out here because I know Dominic up here, he's a smart aleck, and he'll come back and say, look, every soul, you never put that term on our review packet, so I didn't know I needed to know that. That's what the et cetera stands for, everything else. Sigma addition postulate. How long is that segment? You can read my numbers. 15, that's all sigma addition postulate is. Midpoint distance formula. Do we want to write those down again or? No? I think you can remember them. They're on the board there, right? I'll write it up here just in case you want to write it down there so you don't have to look up here. Distance formula. What do you do with your x's? Subtract them. Squared plus the y's. Subtracted squared. Remember, you got to be given two points. That's an x, that's a y. Some other point, that's an x, that's a y. You subtract the x's, square it, subtract the y's, square it, add them together. Midpoint formula, don't make midpoint formula hard. It's the easiest formula that there should be. All you do is add the two x coordinates together, divide by two, add the two y coordinates together, divide by two. On the review packet, flipping through there, find any problems that deal with any of these things, and we'll do them together. Set up. 
right, so plus one. First thing we do, distributive property. 7x minus 5 equals 4x plus 4. Subtract 4 on both sides. Subtract 4x on both sides. 3x minus 5 equals what? Four. Now what? Those can't fly. You're left with three x equals what? Nine. Divide by three. X equals three. What they ask us to find? Did they ask us to find x? All right, that's ugly. What they say find? Length of RS. RS is the second part of the segment, right? So 4 times 3 plus 1. Oops. 4 times 3 plus 1. What's that length? Other ones that fit that first section there. Ethan K, was this a bad idea? Maybe. There's just a lot of keys to put in. Think of anything better? I don't know. It would be better if I just ran through all the notes and then we just pick out random problems. That, you think that'd be better? Because yeah. this is easier to look at than pattern. All right, so we'll do that. So we'll go through all the notes and we'll jot down stuff and then we'll go back and just you can ask, hey, I don't understand number 12 on the packet or whatever. So the next one's classifying angles. Classifying and naming angles. Name me three different kinds of angles. Obtuse, right, and acute. That's not you. Ignore that. On this next one, put an asterisk beside this, very important. What do you know about vertical angles? They're congruent. What do you know about complementary angles? Add up to 90 degrees. What do you know about supplementary angles? Add up to 180 degrees. Guarantee there's several problems on there to deal with those. Next one, be able to find the perimeter. How do you find the perimeter of any shape? Add. Add all the sides. Circumference of a circle. Remember, circumference is just diameter times pi. A uh, couple of shapes here, rectangle. What's the formula for area of a rectangle? Length times width. Length times width. Sorry. Area equals length times width. And let's do a circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? Uh, 
Area of a circle. Well, that's what we've been doing here lately. Pi r squared. Pi times the radius squared, good. Not a whole lot on there about reflections, rotations, translation, uh, but a reflection. What's the generic or the layman's name for a reflection? If you're reflecting something. What are you doing? What is it? Flip. How about a rotation? You're rotating it. What's the layman's name? Turn. Translation. Slide. There you go. Surface area and volume. Surface area. Please remember with surface area. If I'm trying to find the surface area of a box, just draw off all the faces and find the area of each one and add them all up. Otherwise, use that formulas packet. This last one, you might do this. This is sort of important. Modeling real life stuff. If I cut down a tree and I'm trying to make boards, lumber, out of this tree. I'm trying to find how many square inches or square feet of lumber I can get out of the tree. What shape am I dealing with as far as the tree goes? Cylinder. Does everybody see that? When you're cutting that down, you're dealing with a cylinder. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about modeling real life objects. Right? If I'm dealing with this room, whatever I'm going to deal with with this room, what three-dimensional object am I dealing with? Is it a cylinder? Rectangular prism. A rectangular prism. Modeling stuff like that. Now, we all know if we're going to build a barn, is that barn actually a rectangular prism? No, but can we model it and sort of get some idea about things and to use to build it? Next one. Counterexample. Counterexample. If I remember what a counterexample is. Something that proves something wrong. Something that proves it's wrong. A statement that shows that some statement's not always correct. One word for inductive. Inductive reasoning. One word. What's inductive reasoning used? I don't know which one's which, but yeah, one's about one's rules and one's patterns. Patterns, rules. Inductive patterns, deductive rules. Negation. What's a negation do to a statement? If I say it is raining outside, what's the negation of that? It is not raining outside. Conditional statement. Give me another name for a conditional statement. If and, I thought I heard it. If and then. If and then. Mm -hmm. An if and then statement. The if part of the statement's called the what? Hypothesis. Hypothesis. The then part is the conclusion. Law of detachment also gives my input a whole lot on there about that. Properties. Reflexive property. Just using reflexive property. If I write this. Segment AB is congruent to segment AB. What's reflexive property say? Three words. Anything equals itself. Does anybody remember any of the other properties that we covered when we were talking about reflexive property? Uh, in here or something, really? Substitution property. What substitution property do? F Takes out one thing and sticks something else in its place if they're equal to each other. 
Those are the two main ones that we use. Transitive property was a form of substitution. Converse, inverse, and contrapositive. What did the converse do to an if and then statement? All right, so it switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. What did the inverse do? Negates it. Negates it, good. Just makes both parts not, doesn't switch it around, just leaves it in the same order, but negates both parts, and what's the contrapositive do? Both. Both. Switches and negates. Your other exam is going to be Dylan. Mr. Wendell going to make your exam hard? No, he's made my life hard enough. He's, he's made my life hard Is he going to make your exam hard? I get it. Did test we take yesterday? You took a test yesterday? We took, we took like four two. of them. Oh. Yeah. Next one! Put an asterisk beside this. Guarantee there's one of those on there. Put an asterisk beside this. I will do this for you. The two column proof. On the geometry two column proof, the one that's on the test is about triangles. So when we get to that part, those were a little simpler. Put an asterisk beside this one, that's very important. If I draw this, what's those extra arrows tell us about those two lines? Parallel. Parallel. What's this third line called? Transversal. Transversal. I got angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, angle six, angle seven, angle eight. Tell me something you know in that picture. One, three, six, and seven are congruent. Angle one's congruent to angle three. Why are those two congruent? The vertical angles. Why are one and seven congruent? Alternate exterior. Alternate exterior. Why are three and six congruent? Alternate. Alternate interior. Why are three and seven congruent? Smash it together. Uh, Starts with a C. Corresponding. Corresponding angles. All right. Guaranteed. Quite a bit of stuff on the test about that. Uh, if lines are parallel, what do you know about their slopes? They're the same. If lines are perpendicular, so if I have these two lines and they're perpendicular, what do we know about their slopes? Opposite reciprocals. Flip it over, change the sign. As far as equations of lines go, if I put anything on there about equations of lines, what equation do you think I'd be dealing with? Y equals mx. Y equals mx plus b. What two things do you need to know to write an equation in that form? Slope and... The y-intercept. Sorry, that's sort of ugly. But you remember all that from algebra last year, right? Yeah. Actually, kind of. Mr. Harrison's a thousand times better teacher than me. No, it's just Don't easy. ever say that. Easier stuff. How many questions did, did the exam? You can't get three questions. 30 some. Uh, that's it. Reflections, all this stuff. We've already talked about this. I'm going to skip over this. A tessellation. A tessellation is if I took this screen right here and I just laid out random shapes to start covering the entire screen. 
You ever do this? Do they have you do stuff like this in art class? No. Translation, anything like that? No. They used to. All right. See? A lot of times it'll be if you've ever played those little games where it's in a box and you've got to lay the shapes in there so they all fit in there. That's a tessellation. And they all got to fit in there perfect. Tetris? No. So, but that's where the name for Tetris came from is something like that. Symmetry. If I have this shape and I want to draw a line of symmetry, line of symmetry just cuts the shape so that it folds up perfectly. So if I'm holding my paper here, where would a line of symmetry be? Those two, right? How about this way? Would that be a line of symmetry? No. Because when you fold it up, is it going to match up perfectly? No. No. We didn't do a whole lot with that, but so that's why I'm going over that pretty quick. This one, put an asterisk beside that, put an asterisk beside that, put an asterisk beside that. Put an asterisk beside that, put an asterisk beside that. Now we're getting into triangles, so we did a lot with triangles, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a rule about the angles related to a triangle. They add up to 180. Add up to 180. Add to 180 degrees. There's all kinds of them, right? That was the main one. Again, the proof that, one of the proofs that's on the test will be about triangles. What about the other piece? If I'm doing this, remember with this, let's do this real quick. What's CPCTC stand for? Uh, corresponding parts of, what is it? Congruent triangles are congruent. Guaranteed that one of the two column proofs on the test, you're going to use that. So if you're doing the two column proof, you're going to go down through and it's going to be like number one, number one, number two, number two, number three, however many it's got, number three, number four, number four, number five, number five, Number five might be the triangles. Some triangles congruent to some other triangle. And that's got to be one of these four things. The reason here has to be one of those four things. What's the only thing that could be a reason for number six? CPCTC. So remember, that comes after you've proven the two triangles are congruent. What's an isosceles triangle? Two sides congruent. What's an equilateral triangle? Three congruent sides, three congruent angles. Yeah. I go to the left. I leave myself any space. So for an isosceles triangle. <laughs> yes. Isosceles triangle. These two sides are congruent. Main. The main uh, rule about an isosceles triangle, if those two sides are congruent, what else do you know? The base angles down here are congruent to each other. Equilateral triangle, that means all three sides are congruent. What's that tell me about each of the angles? Give me more. They're all 60 degrees. Fit 30 questions with this many. No. 
I'm just surprised. That takes some good time. That takes, and I make it up, I cut out about 70 questions, Perfect. and I and I put them on there. So what you're saying and then at the end, end, I don't even look at them. The ones that I didn't put on there, I just wad them up and throw them in the trash can. So I don't, because if I look at them, I'm going to say, man, I really should put that one on there. Man, I really should put that one on there. You just take out 70 questions. Perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, medians, altitudes, triangle inequalities. Uh, there's a few questions on there about this stuff. A perpendicular bisector of a triangle. So if I have any triangle and I draw a perpendicular bisector, remember that that perpendicular bisector is perpendicular to it, and what else does it do to that side of the triangle? Cuts in half, bisects it. If one of the rules about a perpendicular bisector that I, I want to say without it being a triangle, if I have a perpendicular bisector of a segment, so that's a right angle and these two segments are congruent. If I pick some point right here, we'll call this N, that point N there, and that point T, I pick point H right there. What do you know about the distance from N to H and the distance N to T? They always got to be the same. Any point that falls on that perpendicular bisector is the same distance from those two endpoints. An angle bisector. What is an angle bisector? Bisects one of the angles. All right? This, a median. These two are important. Median, altitude. Try to draw a median over here. If I draw a median of a triangle, median goes from a corner of a triangle to the opposite side. And what's it do to that opposite side? Bisects. It splits it in half. So it always goes to the midpoint. So whenever you hear median, think of midpoint. I'd like to help you out, and they're all still posted over there on the side, but they're all covered up now, Henry, so with the other stuff. That's hanging up somewhere? Yeah, that takes me doing the work. Uh, well, we I'm coming in and hey, we're not too worried about that. We'll take yeah. care of it. I'll have intervention. I'll skip my little awards. And I'll not skip. Skip. An altitude. If I have a triangle and I want to draw an altitude, an altitude goes from a corner of a triangle to the opposite side and it forms what? Anytime you hear altitude, what should you think of? Airplane. Right angle. Right angle. So an altitude. You hear altitude, you know it's going to go from a corner to the opposite side and form a right angle. Triangle inequality. Two of these that I actually want to talk about that are important. Any two sides of a, I should put, sum of any two sides of a triangle must be what? Uh, if I give you a triangle. There must be square root of the triangle. Oh, yeah. Any triangle, doesn't have to be a right triangle. I tell you this side is 5 and this side is 12. Can this side just be any a number in the world? No, no. we just got to be between certain things. These two have to add up to be yeah. more than that one. So how large could this side go up to? 17. Can it ever get to 17? No. So any two sides of a triangle must the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be bigger than the third side. That's one of them. The other one, if I give you this triangle, that side's 5, that side's 12, and this side is whatever it is, 13 maybe. If we put some angles on here, A, B, and C, the other inequality says, the longest side always has to be across from what? 
biggest angle? The biggest angle. The smallest side has to be across from the smallest, smallest angle. So in any triangle, longest side across from the biggest angle, smallest side across from the smallest angle. Those are the two main inequalities about triangles that you need to know. Be able to name polygons. In other words, like an eight-sided polygon is a what? Octagon. Octagon. So on, so on. Those are ones that you guys probably know. You learned that in like fourth grade or something. Uh, interior and exterior angles. They might remember the formula for interior angles of a polygon. Some of the interior angles. I don't remember. I know what it looks like. N minus 2 times 180. What's N stand for? Number of sides. Number of sides. What's the formula for exterior angles? What do you know about the exterior angles of a polygon? They're equal 360. They're always 360. Always 360. Know all the properties for a parallelogram and for rectangle squares, uh, trapezoid, rhombus, so on, so on, all those that we have over there on the side boards know those properties. Now I'm probably not going to put some random property on there like, hey, this is a kite. What do you know about these opposite angles? No, I'm probably, if I put something on there, it would probably be something like, hey, this is a parallelogram. I could what do you know about these opposite angles? What has to be true about opposite angles in that parallelogram? They have to be congruent. They have to be the same. So on and so on. So know all those properties. A lot of properties. Those are sort of important. You don't know stuff about rectangles and squares. A lot of stuff you can't do. Mm. Dilation, scale factor, uh, reduction, enlargement. Remember, scale factor is K, and it's just two matching sides. Side one matched up to side two in the two different shapes. Might want to put an asterisk with that. Not so much that one, sorry. Might want to put an asterisk beside this one. I'm not going to make you prove triangles are similar. I'm going to tell you that they're similar, and then once you know that they're similar, be able to find the missing parts of it. And that's by setting up proportions, cross multiplying and solving, and using any of those triangle proportionality theorems that we dealt with. So if I give you a picture, it looks like this. Mr. Eversole standing here, and he's six foot tall. He cast a shadow that's that's uh, 12, feet. 12 feet. And there's a tree over here. And it casts a shadow that's 32 feet. How tall is the tree? How would we, what would we set up there? Well, six over 12. Six compares to 12. So Miranda's going from here to there. Then what's going to have to be the other one? X to 32. X to 32. Is that the way you have to set it up? No. But if that's the way she sets it up, that's fine. Then you cross multiply and you solve. Again, important. And to use several of those on the test. James, did I get out of the way enough? On that one. Next one. You probably figure out which one's to mark on this. anything on there about the geometric mean or altitude to the hypotenuse, the leg theorem and all that stuff. Good deal. Pythagorean's theorem though. Pretty important. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And C has to be the what? Hypotenuse. Uh, hypotenuse cross from the right angle. Pretty good. Definition of small. Small <coughs> crap thing I think I would understand that. Draw 
First, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. <clears throat> side across from the 30 degree angle gets labeled what? A. L. L. Side across from the 60 degree angle times square root of close. 3, and the other side is 2L. Might want to write that down so that you have it there. If you don't like the 30, 60, 90 stuff, what else could you use to solve any of those triangles? Pythagorean. Could you use Sokotoa, maybe Pythagorean theorem. What's the other one up there? If it's not a 30, 60, 90, special right triangle? 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. Sides across from the 45 degree angles get labeled L and L. Side across from the right angle, L times the square root of 2. Sokotoa, just remember with Sokotoa, steps, you got to pick out your angle, label the triangle, then set up your equation. And your equation is always going to be uh, Sorry, I had to stop and think. trig name, so sine, cosine, or tangent, then the angle, then an equal sign, then your fraction. And then real world problems, that's just sort of self-explanatory. This slide right here might be, of all the slides, this might be the biggest percentage of the test. Chapter 9. Is this chapter 9? Is that which one it is? This might be the biggest percentage of any of the, any of the chapters that we've went over so far. problems on the test that deal with 
you know, like maybe one deals with this, one deals with this, one deals with this, so on and so on. So there's, there's several problems that deal with circles, just not any one concept. Does that make sense? What angles do you think I would put on there that are related to circles? Right. Two main ones. What kind of angle is that? A central angle. What do you know about a central angle in its arc? Uh, yeah. They're the same. What kind of angle is that? Inscribed. Inscribed. What do you know about an inscribed angle in its arc? The angle is half of the arc. The angle is half as much as, as the arc. Pythagorean theorem. No stuff like if I have a tangent and I draw a radius to the point of tangency, what kind of angle is formed right there? Right angle and then that's a right triangle and I can use Pythagorean theorem, so on and so on. So there's 30 some problems on the test. There's probably four or five problems that deal with circles. So about sixth, the seventh, an eighth of the test, maybe something like that. Uh, all this stuff, just make sure that you have that formulas packet. That'll be helpful. I wouldn't put anything on there real difficult. Probably not going to put anything like a hexagonal pyramid or anything like that. What the heck is in that? It's a pyramid it's that has a hexagon for a base. It's above your we get paid? That's all I'm going to get paid. And basic probabilities. I didn't put any probabilities on there. Let's freaking go. Thank you. Nice, man. Well, hey, Lawson doesn't hate you anymore. Just because he called me nice. We're going to get the test. We'll take you out of your mind, though. Why? At this point, you already lied. Watch this. Problems. You want to see worked off the packet? We got about 15, 20, 20 minutes. Sorry. Can we work it? Just Can you do 67? Like Number two. Yep. Give me a second. I'll do 67. Mr. Overfall. Yeah. If I don't, if I don't get your test back to you before you turn your binder, I'm going. To, I will pass them back first thing next week. I got to get them in the grade book right now. If I don't get them back to you before you turn your binder in, I will stick it in your binder so you don't miss that grade. Number two. Be ready to ask other questions. What kind of angle is that angle out there? At, uh, I can't read the letters. K M N. That's a what angle to the triangle? Exterior. What do you know about the two, those two interior angles, and how they relate to that exterior angle? L and K add up to equal They add up to equal that. What are L and K? I can't see it. Eighty one. So four X plus eighty one should equal what? Thirteen X plus thirty six. We solved that. Subtract 4x on both sides. I'm going to rush through these, so if you're paying attention, that's great. If not, oh well. 9x plus 36. Subtract 36 on both sides. You might need your calculator out. Help me. 9x equals what's 81? 45. Divide by 9. What's x? 5. Is that right? What did they ask us to find? The okay. That's the. That's the top top angle, right? Yeah. Again, I can't see the letter. So that was the 4x. So 4 times, not 4 times 2, 4 times 5. What's 4 times 5? Is that one of the answers? 20 degrees. Which one did you say, Cooper? 67. 67. 67, be looking through there and finding one that you don't understand that you want help on. Uh, can you do 66 after this? Remind me when we get to it. So we have this. This segment's called a what to that circle? That's 66. Oh, am I on the wrong one? Sorry. Uh, 
Well, that's 66. That's what he said to do in there. So you can just do 67. Do this one? Yeah. All right. So 66, then I'll do 67. My fault, too, bro. So what's this to the circle? Tangent. Tangent. This is a radius. Radius. We know that if it hits that, then it forms a right angle. Uh, so we have a right triangle there. They tell us that segment LA is what? So that's nine. So what's this from here to here? Nine. Nine. Uh, BZ, they say, is six. So how long is this whole thing? Fifteen. Fifteen. We can do that real quick. Find segment AB, which is the bottom. Twelve. What could we use? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Could we also use the triple? Yeah, it does fit one of the triples. If you don't see that, don't worry about it. Which one's A this time? Nine. So nine squared. Do we know B? So let's leave it B. What's the hypotenuse this time? The whole thing there, which is 15. That's 81. Ignore that. Is that 225? Is that right? Subtract 81 on both sides. B squared equals, what's that? I can't do that in my head. 144, is that right? Oh, yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Yes. Then what? Six square root. Six square root. Six square root. So 12. So how long is segment AB? 12. Oh, does it give us units? Yeah. <sighs> 66, 67. 66. 67, they give us the word or the sentence. If a, I'm going to abbreviate some of this. If a quadrilateral is a square, then is a rectangle. That's the converse. That's the original statement. I haven't done anything yet. What's this part called? Hypothesis. That's the hypothesis. What's this part called? Conclusion. Conclusion. So the converse. Converse does what to the sentence? Switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. So what's that going to be? To make it make sense, we need to leave that quadrilateral part in the first part, don't we? So if a quadrilateral is what? A rectangle. Then what do we know about it? Then it is a square. They want to know, is that true or false? So if I have this rectangle. Is it a square? No. Not necessarily, right? So that's false. Inverse. What's the inverse do to a statement? It negates both parts. Leaves it in the original order, but negates it. So if a quad is what? Not a square. Not a square. It is not a rectangle. Then not a rectangle. So if I got this quadrilateral, I got this. It's not a square, correct? Does that mean it's not a rectangle? So is that a true or false statement? Contrapositive. What's the contrapositive do? Switches and the gates. So if a quad is not a rectangle, is not rectangle, not a square, then it is not a square. True or false? True. If I got some shape and it's not 
a rectangle. So it's not this. I don't have any other shapes in my hand. I'll make sorry I can. So I got this shape right here. It's not a rectangle. Can it be a square? No, nah, because all squares are rectangles. So this one is true. true. Other questions? Give me others. 26. 26. Josh, that comes right after 25. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know that because I've put my pages too far. 26. That's the one with the circle loading. Yeah, you can't do it. It's just like blank. It's blank? What? Like, it says the measure of measure B is. Uh, yeah, it says the measure of angle B is. You can well, and the answer B. is. Yeah. Okay. That's what you can do. That's. What kind of. What is this to the circle? Diameter. Diameter. If I draw this, endpoints are the same as the endpoints at diameter. What do we know about that angle? The right angle. So what's the measure of angle B? 90 degrees. That was impossible. No, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of Cooper. I'm making fun of Cooper. Oh, dude, the answer is Cooper's a nice young man. What? Other questions? Cooper, one of those seat boxes. 102. The measure of angle B is what? And we thought that was it. Since it's an algebraic proof, we could just start off doing this. I don't really have to think it through. The geometry one you should think through first. What's our first statement going to be? Given. Yeah. So, all right, given right here. Oh, no, that's the first thing. 3x plus 5 equals negative 4. My answer is going to ran out. Give. What's our first reason going to be? Give on. Give. Now, please make sure you number your statements, do all that stuff, statements and reasons so that they match up. What's the first thing you do to start to solve this? Distribute. Distribute. What's that give us when we distribute? 6x plus 2 equals 4. Equals what? Negative. What did you use to go from one to two? Distributive. Distributive property. You can use some abbreviations. Please make sure you don't abbreviate certain things though, because I won't know what it is and I'll mark it wrong. And you can add 10. Add 10 to both sides. What's it give me when I add 10 to both sides? Six. Uh, six. 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 Equals six. 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 What did I use there? This is addition, the one, addition property. This is the one you need to remember something here. If I just write addition property, is it going to be correct? No. It's addition property of equality. You've got to make sure you got that part on there. It's telling whoever's looking at it that you did the same thing to both sides. Now what? X equals 1. X equals 1. How did you go from three to four? Division. Division. Property, is that what I write? Uh, of equality. Of equality. What's step five going to say, or statement five? Nothing. Nothing. Next question. 99. 99. Mm. I just messed up so bad. I wrote 102 on the go three. I had to draw arrows and point them down there or whatever. So there are. Ninety-nine. Richard is flying a kite. No, I'm not gonna draw Richard and the kite. Is that alright? Yeah, I'll put the kite up there. That's the kite. Richard's down here. That's Richard. Why are we drawing Richard in this kite? Because he says to draw it right there. Oh. 
The kite string makes a 57 degree angle with the ground. Where's that going to go? So 57 degrees, put that right in there. What do we know about this angle? 90. Hopefully it's the right angle. Richard is standing 100 feet from the point on the ground directly below the kite. So that's this point. Richard's over here. So what do we know about this distance? It's uh, 100, 100 feet. feet. Find the length of the kite string. Which of our two sides is the kite string? The one between Richard and the kite. So that's X. That's what we're looking for. Can we use Pythagorean's theorem on this? No. No. No, we're missing a side. We need no two sides to find the third side. So what do we have to use? Sunkatoa. Gotta use Sunkatoa. First thing we do, pick our angle. Which angle are we gonna pick? Label the triangle. What's that side get labeled? Uh, opposite. Opposite. What's that side across from the right angle get labeled? Hypotenuse. What's this side get labeled? Adjacent. Adjacent. Which two sides do we care about? The X and the uh, under foot. I don't care about this one. Adjacent. Adjacent and, and uh, hypotenuse. Which trig ratio deals C with adjacent hypotenuse? Cosine. The cosine. So we do cosine. What's our angle? Uh, 56. 57. Equals X. A over H. Yeah. So what's A? The adjacent. 100 over, what's the hypotenuse? Grab your calculator. Make sure you're grabbing your calculator right now so that if it got changed to the wrong thing again, you'll know it before you get to the test. It's 0 0.5, 5, 5, 5, 4, 5. Anybody else get that? Yeah. That don't sound right to me. What? It's 0 0.5, yeah. Point five four five. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Five four five, not five four. Five. Oh, so if we want to go out one more spot. What's the next spot? Six. Well, six. well it would be four, it's, four, six, it's five eight. point four, point five, four, six. four six three nine oh three five. How many places we go out for this stuff? Four, four places. Tell four, me four places. Five four, five, four, four, four six. Five four four six. Yes. Yes. Put that over one. Goodness. Put that over one. Gee whiz. <laughs> Hundred over x. Now what? Cross multiply and divide. You get point five four four six times x equals one hundred. Divide. What did it come out to be? 183.62. And there's your thing to do. What's our units? Feet. Make sure your answer makes sense on these ones like that one. Does it make sense that there's 183.6 feet of kite string? Yeah. 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 Next question. We're going with our one oh three. If I write something wrong, please tell me. What they tell us? What's the given information say? So I can work my diagram. Say it again. So that's a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No. So this segment's congruent to that segment. That's a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No. Take something else. What do we know about these two angles? They're, uh, yeah, uh, They're vertical angles, so they have to be congruent. Uh, now, when we do this, it could be angle side angle, or it could be angle angle side. Which one is it? Angle angle side. Angle angle side. Remember, you got to watch the order. Now, is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yes. 
Are we trying to prove the two triangles are congruent? C. Yes. So that's all the farther we'd have to go when we do our two column proof. If we were trying to prove angle E is congruent to angle H, we'd go one step farther and use CPCTC. That's fine, we don't need to do that. Statements, reasons, what's our first statement going to be? Angle D is congruent to angle G. Angle D is congruent to angle G? Given. That was given. And I usually put like a little A out here to remind me of that. Then what? E. Segment ED is congruent to segment HG. HG. How do I know that? Given. That was given. I put a little S out here. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yes. EFD, angle EFD, make sure you're using your symbols. Is congruent to what angle? GFH. GFH. How do we know that? Vertical. Please make sure vertical angles are congruent. If you just put vertical angles, that's wrong. Put an A out here. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yes. Now you've got to match up the triangles. This time they've already matched them up for you. So you don't really have to worry about matching them up. But if you need to, what would we have to do to this triangle to get it to match up to that one? Flip it. Just flip it over like this? Oh, no, you got to rotate it. you got to rotate it, don't you? But this time they told you, what they, how'd they match them up? D-E-F. D-E-F? G-H-F. G-H-F? And what was it? Angle, angle, side. Again, when you put two triangles here, that has to be one of those four abbreviations. This one doesn't have it, but if there was another step, what would the reason here for number five be? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You get past the triangles, like on number 104, then that's what you're going to have to use. Might have time for one more short one. 29. Who said that? Wow. That's the first time I've heard of you. Wow. Cooper, you've been good today, so I'm not going to say all the smart aleck things that I want to say right now. Please do. Cooper, we pray for you. Everybody else is going to do it for me. Uh, 29, what kind of shape do we have in 29? Uh, square? square? Octagon? Hexagon? Pentagon? Square? Which one is it? Pentagon. What do you know about the exterior angles? And all those didn't matter. What do you know about all the exterior angles of this shape? Got to equal 360. Got to add up 360. B. So, Tell me one of the angles in this shape. The X here. 56. 56. 56. 4X. 4X. 57 and 85. 57 plus 85. And we just said all of those exterior angles should add up to how much? 360, no matter what the shape is. 2X and X, that gives us 6X. Somebody add up all those numbers for me. 198. 198. Anybody agree with that? Yes, no, maybe? 56, 57, and 85, is that 198? Subtract 198 on both sides. 6x equals what? Now your calculator is up now. Let's get this done. 162. Divide both sides by 6. What is it? What they ask us to find? Find X. Find X. So that's our answer. So what are we saying about 50? 50 problems on there? Or should I make it more? We did quite a few. That's enough. That's enough. 50. So if we do them all, we get extra credit. We'll see. Maybe.
You should, no. you should do them all because, I think somebody said earlier, you know what, Eversol's lazy sometimes. He might have just taken a whole bunch of problems off of this and made up the exam. That might be partially true. Whoa. Not completely, but partially. We'll make her win. That's what she said. So if you do them all, that is a reason she did. <laughs> if you do them all, you can be guaranteed that some of them that you do are going to be questions on the exam. Told you. Yep. Don't forget binders. If you want to turn in binders uh, on Monday, you can. Bring them in early, and I'll try to get it graded right back to you as quick as I can on Monday. Okay, I think it's the first class I went to. I didn't get yelled at. Last two years we copied that. That's why you still got yelled at today. I think it takes you like a little home. Don't keep your ass. I was about to get hit by a couple of years. Was it mine? Come on, let's see. Okay, first. I'm gonna say Johnny on you. No. <laughs> Anything equals itself. Softball skill. Just don't do the softball. Did you see us fooling around? Cooper has the wrath of Johnny Watson. I've seen a couple of you. Yeah, Edward. I love national that.
so we do.